well as stormy weather. The most rainfall the city has seen in more than 60 years. This is one last night, just east of us. And this was a, that, that was a picture every second. Daniel Fuller caught part of the storm on his GoPro. Yeah. I've lived here about 20 years, and I have never seen flooding like this before. And this photo shows more flooding in Roswell. The water is up to the doors of those cars. How long have you all lived here? Oh, 12 years. Have you ever seen flooding like this? Not before? like this, no. Southeast Texas is at risk for more flooding this morning after violent storms killed at least one person. Thunderstorms unleashed heavy hail in San Antonio Tuesday. Cars took a beating. In Houston, a second straight day of drenching rain flooded the downtown area. Winds hit 60 miles an hour. Flood waters are creating unusual dangers. The rain pounded St. James Parish for quite some time today, too, causing widespread flooding there. Caskets from the cemetery on Belrose Lane floating away from their resting places. The rain started before dawn. Severe storms that dumped a deluge on St. James Parish. Drainage ditches overflowed. Streets flooded. But the bigger story is that over 60 homes and businesses have been flooded. There was so much rain it quickly overwhelmed the drainage system. Parish residents, sheriff's deputies, even the parish president all said the same thing. They've never seen anything like this. From the Dakotas all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico, they are cleaning up after a round of severe weather, tornadoes, hail, and it comes just as we all now brace for something else, the beginning of hurricane season. Overnight, skies alive from the Canadian border to the Gulf of Mexico. Almost 400 severe weather reports this week that have brought us some stunning images. Hail covering roads as far as the eye can see in North Dakota. Look at that, dude. That striking EF2 swirling through that RV park injuring nine. We've got some amazing video to show you. The a young man who's lucky to be alive. Scott Shepard was in South Dakota taping this, this thunderstorm. And watch this. Lightning hits him, travels to his arm. That's debris from the pavement that knocks a hole in the ground where he was standing. His phone kept working, he was alive, it disabled the car that was passing by him. And today, the president at a briefing with FEMA. As hurricane season begins, uh, we have to remember that responding to a hurricane is a team effort. Reminding all of us that now is the time to prepare for what Noah says will be a season with eight to 13 named storms, three to six hurricanes, and one to two major hurricanes. Indonesia's Mount Sanyang volcano has begun to erupt, with huge ash clouds rising 3,000 meters into the air and being pushed eastwards. It has left thousands of air passengers in nearby Australia stranded, with ash meaning the majority of flights in and out of Darwin Airport have had to be canceled. Huge sinkhole swallows a car in Evansville, Indiana, but the driver and his three passengers were not hurt. The group had stopped at a stop sign Friday afternoon when the driver says the car began to feel strange and started to sink. All four climbed to safety before the car's front end sank into a hole. Police say the hole is 12 feet wide and 16 feet deep, caused by a failed water main and sewer line. Geologists are on the scene of a metastasizing sinkhole in Florida right near the famous Legoland theme park. This thing is threatening to swallow up an entire parking lot, and the big question is how to stop it. Check out this 85-foot-long, 18-foot-deep crater that's getting bigger by the minute in a parking lot just across the street from Florida's Legoland theme park. This growing cavity is just 40 miles from the 2013 sinkhole that opened up beneath Jeff Bush's bed. A few months later, experts believe a sinkhole was behind this collapse of a Central Florida vacation resort near Disney World. There's a large sinkhole opening up in Alachua County. GTN's Haley Holloway is live in Jonesville on the scene. Right now, this one is 40% bigger than it was just this morning, and he says it's only going to get bigger from here. You can see the biggest of the sinkholes is right behind me beside this retention pond. Another one is beside it in the water. People who work in this area tell me both of these have been on the property for about a month and have been growing in size. Nearby employees tell us another sinkhole on the property opened up just this weekend. Meteorologists were confused, so they called in the radar professionals who were equally baffled. What was that green blob drifting over Albuquerque, New Mexico? We really, we actually thought that the radar was broke. <laughs> 
So we had our technicians go out there a couple times. They couldn't find anything wrong, so we had to call the, the National Radar Depot in Oklahoma. Well, the experts in Oklahoma answered with a question. They want to know if Albuquerque has an insect problem. And as it turns out, they do. That green patch was radar spotting thousands of grasshoppers flying a thousand feet high, well above the town's tallest buildings. It all adds up to the city's worst infestation in 20 years. The cause? A winter drought. Millions in the plains and Midwest face the threat of tornadoes and thunderstorms again this morning. Millions of Americans on alert this evening right into tomorrow, and here's what it looks like on the ground. One driver on a treacherous highway capturing the lightning in Missouri. That same storm system now marching east. Tonight, a second blast of severe storms marching across the Ohio and Tennessee valleys and western plains. Packing baseball-sized windshield-busting hail. Overnight, heavy rains and strong winds pummel central Nebraska as a massive storm tore through the region. In Omaha, several homes were flooded, forcing people to seek emergency shelters. We're going to be out all night. We'll be out monitoring. We're working with emergency management personnel and the National Weather Service. A powerful mix of 90 mile an hour wind. The system caused widespread damage across the state. It shattered car windows, tore the roofs off buildings, and even overturned this truck. The Woodhouse Auto Dealership said the storm damaged nearly 4,500 of their cars. There's the Pavlov volcano erupting in Alaska. Take a look. That is a huge cloud of ash and steam, all of it shooting up some 24,000 feet above sea level. You can see the cloud there up above the volcano. That, that can be really uh, troublesome for some of the jets flying overhead. If there is an eruption this big, this powerful, they have to send those... Uh, jets somewhere else. Wow, quite some images there. Hundreds of dead fish washing up along the shores of a Logan County lake. Now visitors are wondering if something's wrong and what this means for the summer season. A fish in water, it's not an unusual sight. At the lake here we have some excellent fishing. Floating lifelessly, however, that is a bit unusual. And not just one or two. We're talking hundreds of white bass. I've never seen this many fish before. John Bodie has lived on Indian Lake for 35 years. Sometime last week, he noticed a number of fish out of water, lying on the dock behind his house. Uh, this is unusual. The sky fills with sand, forming a gigantic cloud which blocks the sun. The city below is plunged into darkness. The temperature drops by 15 degrees. It's hard to see through the thick dust. This amateur video sent to the BBC shows chaos on the roads. 20 cars were involved in one accident alone. Torrential downpours in southwest China's Guizhou province have hit more than 59 counties and affected 200,000 local residents. The storms have also killed four people and left two others missing. Two days of continuous rain have resulted in multiple floods and landslides, affecting 14 cities. The heavy rain has also forced local schools and hospitals to shut down. Lightning bolt that seemed to aim right for this truck speeding down a highway in Alberta, Canada. Watch this. Slow motion shows the fireball that engulfed the pickup. All of the truck's airbags deployed. Smoke filled the cabin. The couple inside were trapped when the doors and windows would not open. Fortunately, a police officer happened by and helped them escape, but the lightning strike left two craters in the road that are still visible. It sounded like a sonic boom. It was just, that's how loud. At full speed, you can still see just how powerful the hottest example of nature's fury can be. Two massive craters on the highway mark the spot where the lightning struck. The Central Plains and the Mississippi Valley are bracing for severe storms today. Yesterday, parts of northern Colorado saw a funnel cloud touch down. This is what hovered over portions of Morgan County, about 80 miles northeast of Denver. Minor damage was reported. And portions of Kansas saw significant hail at first, but then a tornado barreled in. There are no reports of injuries or severe damage.
But developing right now, a huge fish kill leaves a mess on the beach in Cape May Point. Chopper 3 over the sea, and this is in front of the Sunset Grill. How unfortunate for them. Officials from the State Department of Fish and Wildlife Services and the Department of Environmental Protection are there. Eyewitnesses say there are hundreds of bunker fish on the beach and more washing up by the minute. No word yet on what caused the fish kill. tornado near Trinidad we showed you just a second ago touched down for nearly an hour. Fortunately it was in a very rural area but there was still a very close call. It don't look nice. Very dark, low. It was the kind of cloud worth getting your phone out to video because? Something different other than what I've ever seen before and I was hoping it wasn't going to turn into anything bad and unfortunately it did. Turning into a tornado east of Trinidad. I've never seen anything like it. it. It stayed there and it was unbelievable to me how long it stayed on the ground. Had to have been 45 minutes. From tornado clouds to golf ball size hail, the pictures and scenes of these dangerous storms are incredible. And down in Roswell, Kimberly Harshi Key captured a tornadic cloud overhead and storm clouds creeping in over the area. asteroid with a nickname the beast will be flying by earth this weekend and it's cutting it pretty close at a range of only a little over 700,000 miles which is actually pretty close this asteroid will be whizzing by us on Sunday June 8th 